الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم من بعد. So it's no mystery for us. All of us know the Arkan al-Islam. We know the Arkan al-Islam, and this is one of the hadith in the book Arba'ina Noah when we were uh, discussing. This is the third hadith if you have your book with you, and this is the hadith of Abi Abd Rahman. عبد الله بن عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول بني الإسلام على خمس شهادة لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وحج البيت وصوم رمضان هو البخاري ومسلم in this hadith this is the hadith of uh, Abi Abd Rahman Abdullah Ibn Umar bin al Khattab Ibn Umar, he was the son of who? He was the son of Umar bin al Khattab, the second Khalif of the Prophet. And in this hadith, this hadith Azim gives us, this hadith illustrates for us the pillars of Islam. The how many pillars of Islam are there? Rashad? How many? Pillars of Islam. I just read the hadith. Come sit here. You need to sit close because you're you're out there. I don't know. Yesterday it was pork and now it's three pillars. Huh? Five pillars, Jazakallah Khaira. So, Buni al Islam al Khams. How many is that? Five. Five what? Five what? Mm. Pillars of Islam. Now, these are the Arakan of Islam. So, Islam is built upon five pillars. And the first one is the Shahada, as we all know. As was mentioned in the Hadith. Buni al Islam al Khams. Shahadati and La ilaha illallah. So the first one is bearing witness that there is only, that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. That's the first pillar. Wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. That's also a part of the, that's the second part of the first pillar of Islam. And that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that mentions the first shahada. The shahada is something that is with the heart and the tongue. That is a part of the deeds with the heart and the tongue. And that also shows us that iman, when we say faith, when we say we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that part of iman, it has to do with the heart and it does with the tongue. And it has to do with the tongue. And we'll see that it also has to do with our deeds too. Wa Jawai that the, the things we do on our limbs. So the second pillar, we call is salah, is doing what? What is the second pillar of Islam? Uh -huh, which means? Okay, it means you have to make salah, which is the prayer. So we pray, how many times a day do we pray as Muslims? Hmm. How many times a day do you pray as a Muslim? Huh? How many times? How many salats are there a day? The the wajib salat, the puru. Huh? Five. Okay. Five. Who can name the five salats? Huh? Okay, Zohar, now. Asr. Maghrib. Isha. Fajr. Ascent. So. We are ordered in accordance with this hadith of the Prophet Wasallam to pray the Salat and what is meant by the Salat is praying starting with the Takbir, Takbir al ihram when we say Allahu Akbar we raise our hands and it ends with the Taslim saying Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah, Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah. That is what is meant by Salat. It is acts and statements of the tongue 
that are specified in the Sharia in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we do that five times a day, as Rashad mentioned, that we have five salats to pray. Wa ita zakat, and Muslims are ordered to pay the zakat, to pay the tax on your wealth. So if your money reaches a certain level in Islam, and you have that money for a year, this is one of, one of the types of zakat on your wealth, then you have to pay zakat on that. If you have that money for a year, and the money reaches the certain amount of money that's taxable, then you have to pay a, a, a tax on that, which goes to the poor, which is distributed to the poor. And that's called zakat. Wahajjal bait. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, and making the, the pilgrimage to the bait. Where is the bait? Where's the Bayt Allah that we're talking about? Bayt Allah Haram. Is that in Iran? Or is that in Iraq? Because in Iraq, they, they, it's Ashura. They, they just made what they call the pilgrimage. They, the Shia, they go to this place and they beat their backs and, and cut their heads and bleed all over the place. Is that the place where we make pilgrimage? Where do we make pilgrimage? Huh? In Mecca. Jazakallah khair. So we go to Mecca. This is what Muslims do. I don't know what those, those guys, they have their own program. But Muslims, those believers in Islam, those followers of Islam, who follow the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they make their pilgrimage in one place in the earth. There's no other place. You can't go to Pakistan and make pilgrimage. You can't go to America and make pilgrimage. You can't go 40 days khuruj and make pilgrimage. You can't make pilgrimage to someone's grave. But you make pilgrimage in Mecca only in Mecca, and the pilgrimage is an act of worship, and we worship who with the pilgrimage? Who are we worshiping in the pilgrimage? Uh, who do we worship? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah has commanded us, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba uh, la. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in, the, in all, all throughout the Quran to make the hajj. And all throughout the authentic sunnah, like in this hadith, wa hajj al that we perform the pilgrimage to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So we, we do pilgrimage for Allah and the pilgrimage is only done in Mecca. Only to the uh, only around the Kaaba and the other rites of the pilgrimage. And the last pillar of Islam that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned here, he said was Sun Ramadan, which means fasting the holy month of Ramadan. Ramadan is a month on the Islamic calendar. It's not uh, February, it's not January, it's not going to be the same year on the calendar we're accustomed to. But instead, Ramadan is on the Arabic calendar, it's on the Islamic calendar, and it falls at the same time, uh, you know, it is a month specified in, on the Islamic calendar. So, fasting the month of Ramadan, that's also what Muslims are ordered to do. So, this, these are the pillars of Islam that we cannot leave the pillars of Islam. The pillars of Islam are a part, they form the foundation of Islam. Because when something is a pillar, Sana, Sana, maybe you should come sit here, come over here, sit over here. When something is a pillar, that means it holds up something else. What does a pillar do? A pillar does what? What does a pillar do? Huh? Accent. A pillar holds up other things. So under buildings, a lot of times we have pillars. Pillars, they're those big, they're like columns. They are things a lot of times out of cement, and they hold up the building or the foundation. Or they're a part of the foundation. And that's why... The Prophet ﷺ gave us the example and that there's a, a, the similitude of that Islam is based on pillars, that it is held up, it is supported, it is comprised of, it is made up of pillars. How many pillars again? Five. Five pillars. The five pillars of Islam that we mentioned in the Hadith. And what we want to gain from this hadith, there's uh, just a few, there's many benefits, but we'll just talk about some of the benefits. 
The first thing is that the Shahada 10, when we say Shahada uh, Ashadu la ilaha wa Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, that has to do with the heart. That is ittiqad bil qalb. That is belief with the heart. So the Shahada is belief with the heart and belief with also the tongue. It's also a deed of the tongue. It has to do with your heart, your belief in your heart, and it has to do with uttering it on the tongue. So we, co- we say that those are a'mal al wa a'mal al And those are also deeds of the tongue, deeds of the heart. The second pillar, which is the salat, uh, the salat is a part of the a'mal badiniya, period. That when, uh, when we make the salat, it has to do with the deeds we do. It is outward. It has to do with our body. It is deeds we do with the body. When you make your salat, in fact, the salat comprises really of all of those deeds. It has to do with the, of course, your niya, your intention. Your ittaqad is involved in there because you have to believe in Allah, that you're worshiping Allah. You can't do your salat to the grave. You can't do it to the dead people. You can't do it to your dead sheikh. You can't do it to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu but you have to worship Allah, the one who created the heavens and earth, and who created everybody. So, salat has to do actually with the heart, and we utter dua and supplication on our tongue, and with our body. It's mainly a lot with the body, the salat. When we pray, we use our body. All those prostrations and stuff that makes a Jew, Roku, and, and, uh, sitting between the sajdatain and things like this, then all of those are deeds of their physical deeds they have to do with your body. The third thing is a'mala maliya. And this has to do with deeds that have to do with your money. Things like the zakat. The zakat has to do with, it, it's a deed, it's an action that has to do with your money with how you spend your money or how you, you pay the alms tax, you give the haq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, this is the haq of the creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made an obligation upon you. So zakat has to do with your money. So we have different kinds of actions and different ways we do ibadah, we do worship. We do worship with our, our lisan, with our tongue, by uttering the shahada. We do worship with our bodies. Like when we make the salat, we do worship with our wealth, which uh, when we pay the zakat. And then also the hajj. The hajj has to do with your body, and it has to do with uh, your money. Because it takes money to make hajj. Especially nowadays. Nowadays it's very expensive if you come from far places like America and Canada and Britain and wherever in Europe and China. It costs a lot of money. People spend thousands of dollars just to make hajj. You know, and even before, it's always been a thing that's been very difficult on the body, before especially. Now we have airplanes and it's easy. So, that has to do with some of the uh, importance of the, the different types of ibadah. That the, sh- the pillars of Islam has different, deal with different parts or different actions uh, related to our, our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the benefits we gain from this hadith is that Islam is built on five pillars that we must do, that it's an obligation. We have to do the five pillars. Okay? We have to strive, as the Prophet ﷺ said about Hajj, he said, So if you're able to do so, you make the Hajj whenever you're able to do so. If you don't have the money, you don't have the ability, physically you're not able, then it's not an obligation at that time. Also, zakat is not always an obligation on you. If you don't have money, you don't have to pay zakat. If you don't have any money, you don't have the wealth, the things that are taxable that you pay zakat, then you don't have to pay zakat. Also, uh, this, we also benefit that Islam protects, is a, is a protection for the for Muslims, Islam helps you protect. It helps you protect your wealth. It helps you protect your your property and your body and your heart 
from harmful things. Because all the things the law commands us to do is good, and those things he commands us to leave are bad and harmful for us. So they could be harmful for our wealth. They could be harmful, like, uh, when we take interest. People who take interest, that's harmful to their wealth, in fact. And people who take, uh, people who eat pork, for example. Pork has a lot of harm for the body. Okay? So that's something else. Islam is protecting you from those things. People who speak ill and curse people. Well, that's harmful for your heart, in fact. Whenever you're cursing people, you don't really feel good. You know, that, that, that shows that you're not really happy with yourself inside. Because you can only express yourself with mean things and cursing people. So, uh, Islam protects you and protects us, uh, you know, in our hearts and it protects our body and our wealth. And also, Islam, this hadith shows us that Islam also emphasizes or shows that it's very important to have your heart clean, to have a good, clean heart. That's very important in Islam. Okay, Senna? It's very important in Islam to do what? To have what? Have clean dishes? Clean what? So you're not listening. You need to come sit here. Huh? Clean, clean what? No, we just said it. Clean heart. We just said clean heart. Where are you? Come, come closer. Cause you, you sit right there. Cause you're not just listening to nothing. Hmm. Okay. So also, uh, this also shows us from this hadith the importance of salat and uh, the effect of praying your salat because praying your salat it helps your heart. And the Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith when talking about the importance of the heart, he, he said because in the body there's a piece of flesh that if the body is uh, if the body is healthy then it is a reflection of this thing, and he said, Allah wa hiya qalb. He said, it is the heart. So if the heart is clean, your, your outer self will be clean as well. It means your actions will be clean. Because a person who doesn't pray, then their, their heart, that's a reflection, their heart is not clean. No matter, even if they, you see that they do nice things, they seem like a nice person, but the real cleanliness, the tahara of the heart is not there. Because without the salat, you won't have it. Without praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not have pure and clean heart, or truly pure and clean heart. Someone can be nice, but that's not the, the most important thing as the pure and clean heart, which salat gives us. True salat, if you're paying attention and doing your salat, and not distracted. And those are just some of the uh, benefits of this hadith. A, a last thing that... Uh, the author mentioned here about the Salat and about the Sadiq, he said, whoever leaves one of these arkan, one of these rukun, uh, one rukun, then fakad kefir. He said, whoever leaves off one of the pillars of Islam has disbelieved. So that means the person who doesn't pray as the Prophet ﷺ said, that's what the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said. The one who leads the prayer has disbelief. The one who uh, doesn't do the shahada anymore, they, if they don't believe in the shahada khas, then yes, they're disbelieving. They don't believe in Islam. They're not Muslim. The person who le has the ability to make hajj, and they don't believe, they've left it off, not, maybe they're lazy, but if they say, no, I'm not going to make hajj, they refuse to make hajj, and they have the ability, year after year, they say, no, I'm not going to do it, then this person has disbelieved, you know, because they have left something that is an obligation in Islam, not because they don't have the ability to do it, but they have the money, and they know it's an obligation, but they say, no, it's not. Okay, so leaving off those things, even uh, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu even with the zakat, they fought the people. Some of the people left Islam after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi died. They said, we're not going to pay the zakat. That's what they said. After the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi died, there was a group of people who said, we're not paying the zakat. So Abu Bakr and Umar, they spoke about this issue and they came together and Abu Bakr said, well, why if they leave even one rope, 
I will fight them. One wolf that they don't pay that's left of the zakat, I will fight them. So that shows us that, and he believed they were disbelievers. He said, Khalas. These people, or at least a group of them, were definitely disbelievers. They didn't believe in paying the zakat. They said it was only due to the prophets of Islam. But no, zakat continues until the day of judgment. And so the point being here is that all of the pillars of Islam are very important and we can't leave them. We have to try to practice them the best we can. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything good I said was uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything bad I said or any mistakes I made was from myself and the shaitan.